Good evening, hello and welcome. Saturday is the day, D-Day, when the election bugle for the general elections of 2024 has been sounded. This is going to be your destination over the next two and a half months for all the election heat and dust. Let's get you the headlines in the top of the hour. Lok Sabha election 2024 dates announced. Polls to be held in seven phases across the nation. Counting of votes to take place on June 7. Voting begins on April 19. Dates of assembly polls also announced. Polls in Arunachal Sikkim 19. April Andhra on May 13. Odisha two phases May 13th and 20th. Counting across the country on June 4. Poll panel defends the electronic voting machines which are facing an attack from the opposition. Call electronic voting machines 100% safe. Non-committal on expanding the VVPAT machines across India. Bharat Rashtra Samiti leader K. Kavita produced in a Delhi court a day after arrest in the Likha Gate case. ED seeks 10-day custody. Kavita claims case against her was fabricated and is illegal. BRS sees red, says arrest and election stunt. Ma'am, do you want to say something? Ma'am, do you want to say something? It's a illegal arrest, it's a fabricated case. They're going to break it out. And uh, the one and only Narendra Modi, Prime Minister, will be at the India Today conclave at 8 p.m. tonight. That's the big exclusive. Prime Minister to headline the event hours after the 2024 poll date announcement. Okay, State of War 2024 uh, election dates are announced. I'm first going to give you an election calendar in a moment. Which part of the country you are in, when will you vote? Remember, general elections announced a short while ago by the election chief election commissioner. That's your poll calendar. Take a look. First phase is on the 19th. Then we have the 26th. Then it uh, is the 7th, then the 13th, then the 20th, then the 25th, and finally the 1st of June. So much of the polling will take place in the month of May. There are five, uh, four of the phases are in the month of May, two in April and one on in June. So it's a rather elongated uh, phase. Remember last time the elections got over on the 23rd of May. Now they will get over only on the 4th of June. So we're stretching deeper and deeper into the summer. Those are the big dates. 19th of April will be Tamil Nadu in a single phase. That's the big headline uh, on of the 19th of April. Uh, also Arunachal Pradesh will be a state going to the polls on the 19th of April. Uh, Kerala will be on the 26th. So you've got two of the big states of the south which are getting over in April itself. It's the northern heartland and indeed uh, uh, Bengal and Bihar which will go to the polls across those seven phases. Uh, Maharashtra goes into the polls five in five phases. Mumbai itself is on the 20th of May. So Maharashtra this time across five phases and that will lead to some questions being asked. Did a state like Maharashtra which at one time would not have more than two phases of polling now have to do a five phase poll for a general election? Those are some of the questions that of course will be raised and let me get in some voices on that. Rajat Sethi, Javed Ansari with us as well as Rahul Varma for the Center of Policy Research. Uh, just to get gentlemen your quick reactions to that uh, you know Rahul, are you surprised as someone who's tracked elections for, for years that instead of the process getting shorter, it's getting more and more elongated? Maharashtra used to have one or two phases at best. Now it's five phases even in Maharashtra. Well, thank you, Rajdeep. I, absolutely. We, uh, there was a hope that uh, slowly the number of phases are going to be reduced. Earlier, for last two general elections, we had seven phases. And the idea was with technology and everything, uh, the number of phases should get reduced, but huh? that doesn't seem to be happening. Uh, maybe Election Commission has its own rationale why they have these many phases uh, that has never been uh, shared with public. They only tell us that uh, 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 it's security reasons and because you have to move logistics from one place to the other. That's why you require this kind of two-month-long election uh, cycle. 
but having, uh, you know, in, as you rightly pointed out, Maharashtra stretching it to five phases, it doesn't make sense. I also don't see any political reasons. So, of course, there are going to be conspiracy theories uh, floating around that uh, elections have been, uh, 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 you know, designed in a way to benefit one party or the other. Uh, given the way it has been structured, the way I'm seeing the seven phases, and especially elections are starting from the south, uh, they're less likely of that kind of thing happening. But, you know, uh, we'll hear all kinds of voices uh, in next two months. Rajat Sethi, you have any answers to that? A state like Maharashtra, one can understand Bengal in recent times has had a history of violence. Therefore, you go in for seven phases. Uttar Pradesh is India's most populous state with pockets having had violence. Bihar has had a history of violence, so you have seven phases. Maharashtra, five, sta uh, five phases in a state that has a history of virtually no political violence. It almost seems as if you're, putting, <laughs> you're making the politicians really sweat it out in the summer. See, well, um, it is also a very big state. It is the second largest state uh, when it comes to parliamentary seats. It has 48 seats only after Uttar Pradesh. Um, I think uh, historically also there have been always been four phases uh, or so in Maharashtra. Two just phases. Of the size there used to be, and I can, I can promise you as someone who's tracked, there used to be two phases for the longest time in the 1990s. That's my point. Instead of making elections tighter... We are actually making them uh, more and more elongated. That's my worry. Well, uh, you know, this is where I think uh, the election commission would be best placed to sort of explain this uh, situation. But if you were to draw certain conclusions out of this, I think uh, uh, Maharashtra, the first set of uh, seats are going to be in Vidarbha. Uh, the uh, the bordering areas of Chhattisgarh, Chhattisgarh and Garchiroli Belt, Chemur Belt, all that is going in the first phase. So they are also trying to plan the election so that all the critical security uh, regions are dealt with at first with a heavy concentration of security forces. And then the security mo uh, forces movement is a little eased out and they are then allowed to cover uh, broader geographies within Maharashtra. I think uh, uh, this plus uh, there is, uh, you know, uh, certain reports that Maratha agitation uh, uh, has been, uh, might turn into a little more violent because they haven't seen a closure on their reservation quest so far. So uh, perhaps this could be an added sort of an X factor, which uh, the election commission would have thought that, uh, you know, with Jarange Patel and his supporters getting a little more riled up, uh, there might be some violence on the ground. So maybe that, I mean, that's the yeah. only logic that I can I, think of. I, just to say that it used to be two phases in the 90s. Last time it was four. So from four, we've got to five. <laughs> I <don't give. laughs> so, you know, it, 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 it's, gone, it's gone longer and longer. But yes, Javed Ansari. You know, this seventh phase doesn't make sense, Raj. Mm -hmm. And it flies, it flies in the face of assertions made by the election commission and the government that we want to bring down poll expenditure. What it practically means is that, that from the, even for, for those who are going to poll on the 1st of June, Eastern UP and all that, the candidates will have, for them, the campaign starts from tomorrow. The clock starts ticking from tomorrow. It places a huge financial burden on them. Tamil Nadu, the campaigning will be over in a jiffy. Yes. But, but for those in Eastern UP and elsewhere, and, and, and we, we, are, we are talking of one nation, one poll. First, at least hold, hold polls in one day across the country, even if you cannot. In a state like UP, seven days is mind-boggling. Why should it be? In the, you can hold it in three phases. No, I agree with you, Javed Ansari. I, you know, I, I, all I can promise our viewers, we now have seven uh, episodes of elections on my plate. We had said we would have one episode of elections on my plate for, uh, per phase. So I'm not completely complaining, Javed, since you will now get seven uh, episodes of that. But you make a good point about financial burden. You actually believe that this uh, extended, elongated phase puts even more pressure on politicians in terms of finances. Am I correct? Absolutely. Just imagine the, the constituencies that are going to poll on 25th May and 1st June. They have to start campaigning from tomorrow. Mm -hmm. if they haven't already started and they need to you know get the jeeps running and the, get everything else going campaign offices this is going to place a huge financial burden on candidates and you know the the election commissioner must also be you know more forthcoming when asked about 
not not being able not playing a level playing field he seemed miffed at that question mm -hmm. you know caesar's wife must not you know you have to be seen to be fair also if somebody is asking you a question every you know reporters have every right to ask you need to satisfy somebody's cure a person's curiosity rather than be get miffed at this i take your point there uh, mr ansari you're sounding like the angry young man today on this but uh, Raul Verma, there I'm is a point in what Javed. I'm still a reporter who's not afraid. Well, to no, no, very good. You know, uh, 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 Javed Ansari makes a good point. The longer the poll goes on, the financial burden on candidates only increases. Yeah, I don't think there is anything to disagree there. I absolutely agree with that uh, point. Uh, 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 now, the key question is: I don't think the elections in India, like given the continental size we have it could be held in one or two phases so there like uh, having three or four phases still makes sense but seven phases is not uh, that you know uh, uh, is, comes easily to me what i basically don't understand and this is where perhaps reporters like yourself and javed ansari has to ask uh, election commission what is the rationale behind seven phases they need to put some information in the public domain how some of these decisions are taken you know, that, that is true. They will say movement of forces, uh, Rahul. They will say that it is the movement of forces from one part of the country, Jammu and Kashmir, Bengal, Bihar. We have to make sure that no part of the country, uh, people, uh, we want to make sure a peaceful poll. That's the reason they give, uh, Rahul. You buy? No, I, I, I agree with you. Then why not have it eight, in eight phases or why not in six phases? What like You'll have to ask it the second time. Is seven phases sufficient for... Uh, everything or it has to go uh, rather longer and then movement of uh, like in some cases uh, the gap between two phases is seven days in some other cases it's five days in some other cases it's lesser than that so like I don't understand this math but I guess this is the rationale they are going to uh, uh, give you know the uh, uh, Rajat Sethi you you like to uh, a bit of trivia and history the first polls 1952 went on from October 1951 all the way to February 1952. So that was four months. But that was when ballot boxes were there. They used to be carried on camel and horseback. We are in a digital age now. Across the world, you would expect things to become faster in this T20 age. We are actually forgetting about a five-day test match. We are now going to a timeless test almost by making it a seven-day test match. <laughs> Rajdeep, uh, the geography hasn't changed of our country, be it 1950s or uh, 2020s. Uh, the geography remains uh, pretty complex. I mean, uh, the first phase is in Arunachal Pradesh. I still remember that in 2019 elections, uh, election commission had to airdrop uh, uh, the EVM machines. Yes. And uh, uh, I remember the kind of challenges uh, election commission had to face uh, because the locals were throwing stones at the chopper while they were trying to uh, drop the EVM securely. So uh, they had to keep postponing the election in 2019 and eventually the Arunachal Pradesh election happened after all the phases were over. So, uh, you know, there are issues. I mean, right now also you'll see security challenges in places where, so for instance, Manipur has like 70,000 CAPF, which is a central armed forces uh, deployed there. Um, and there would be more that would be sent to ensure a peaceful election. Now, that's a heavy concentration in an absolutely remote corner. I think this is the reason why, uh, you know, if you look at the design of uh, the first phase, because that is when the election commission and the security forces have the maximum time to go mobilize and station and get a local intelligence about it. That's how they go sit, squat, and then they move out of that quickly. Therefore, the gap between first phase and second phase is large. It's, uh, it's, it's solid a week's time so that they can move from those pockets of extreme security issues to neighborhood where there is relatively lesser security challenges. Mm -hmm. So there is some logic to it. I think we should give it to the election commission who has institutional memories of every single small and big issue that they have historically faced. None, neither you nor any of us in the sitting in the panel have that much amount of uh, understanding of the challenges, micro challenges that go on in elections. So we should give it to the election commission. Seven phases, eight phases, nine phases, there is no holy number here, right? This is where election commission has, with its collective institutional wisdom, 
narrowed down on seven phases. Let us give it to them. That they have far better to them, but you see, arbitrage. we can give it to and them. They know but how to do it. No, no, no. I, you see, they are not just normal election. No, no, no. Commission. Our this, no, no, this voting, globally speaking is one of the most respected voting uh, machinery, most respected election commission in the whole world. So I think uh, yeah, you agree with them. that, Javed Ansari? Are we are we sounding like grumbling fufajis at a wedding? You and I are sounding like grumbling fufajis at a wedding. Saying, "Yar, itni badi shadi kya kar li saath face ki, jaldi kar lete." I have a lot of respect for Rajat, but uh, I'm afraid, and I have spent close to 40 years covering elections, and I can tell you from practical, while I don't have the wisdom of the election commission, but I can certainly tell you that these can be condensed. In this can be done in three, maximum four phases, and there's a practical side to it. Mm. The enormous financial burden. After all, you cited the example. Of you know when when the people used to travel by bullock carts. Now they are they are choppers, helicopters. They are private. Air, I mean, there's there's so much of aircraft. There's there's there's, there's there are trains available. Troops can be moved. Uh, paramilitary can be moved. In a state like UP, you don't have to move the same troops. So it can be done in two in two weeks or three weeks time. It this doesn't make sense. It's practically not the same. I think the election commission needs to relook at this and apply its mind. Now it's done. And I mean, uh, elections have been announced, but for the for the next time when we have elections, they must look at trying condensing it and more than anything else, providing 100% VV pad trail. Rahul Varma, yeah, uh, uh, I'll just come to you in a moment. My colleague uh, uh, Paolo Misaha is breaking down the upcoming Lok Sabha poll date schedule for for uh, for us. Over to you, Paolo Mi. So let's just summarize for you what the Election Commission has announced this afternoon. The schedule for the general elections, the Dance of Democracy, which kickstarts on the 19th of April and the results will be announced on June 4th. So in the first phase of uh, that election, which is to take place on the 19th of April, there will be voting across 102 constituencies, 102 parliamentary constituencies that will witness casting of ballot on phase 2, April 26, 89 seats will go to polls. In phase three on May 7th, 94 constituencies will witness uh, elections and polling. On phase, uh, In fact, in phase four on May 13th is what we know that across the country and across various states, across 96 seats is when that election will take place. As far as phase five is uh, concerned, that will take place on May 20th and 49 seats will witness voting in phase 6 on May 25th. 57 seats will go to polls. And in the last phase, which is the seventh phase of this election on June 1st, 57 seats will witness polling across the country. And finally, the results. D-Day for all political parties in the electoral fray will be June 4th when counting will take place and the results for general elections 2024 will be announced by the Election Commission of India. Okay, uh, let me go uh, for a moment to Mumbai, uh, my city where uh, Mustafa Sheikh is joining us. Mustafa, Mumbai goes to the polls on the 20th in a single phase there, but Maharashtra over five phases. What are the politicians of Maharashtra saying? Do they have any explanation? Every, last time it was four phases. 2009, it used to be single phase. Uh, uh, at best, it used to be two phases. Now it's become four. This time it's five. What, is, what are the reactions you are picking up? Well, of course, Rajdeep, the opposition is not at all happy with this five-phase election in Maharashtra. What they are saying is that even the logic given by the ECI about security movement, security personal movement, the, uh, a single state can be done at least in three phases, if not in two or one, but then five phases and it seems that uh, entire Maharashtra has been divided in the uh, in the case of regionals like the Vidarbha region, the Maratwara region, and uh, other regions are having elections at the at uh, different times. So there is five phase election, which uh, the opposition says uh, proves that the BJP is not going to have an easy election. A lot of political movement has happened since 2019 in Maharashtra. There were two regional parties who have now turned into four, and still it seems that the BJP is going to have a hard walk in Maharashtra and that 
is what the opposition is saying that five phase election is somewhere reflecting that the BJP is not confident in the last moment they want to carry out as much as campaign possible on ground so that they can get maximum result back to you. Mustafa, the opposition, uh, of course, is questioning the way in which this schedule has been organized. The EC, of course, claims that it is a perfectly neutral body. But Rahul Varma, the EC will get, uh, you know, every time poll schedules are announced without providing, as you said, a proper rational explanation beyond just saying poll movement, these questions will be asked. I mean, this is a state I have tracked very closely for 30 years. 48 constituencies, barring one or two, most of them are extremely peaceful. You can easily do Maharashtra in two phases. It almost seems as if you want to micromanage the election by having these five phases. See, Rajdeep, I don't see a problem in micromanaging election. As a citizen of this country, my expectation is to have information from all bodies of the government. I, like, even if I trust... I want to verify my trust. I know and I agree with Rajat that election commission might have more wisdom and institutional memory of how the elections were conducted. Perhaps in 80s and 90s, they were facing troubles. That's why they decided to increase the number of phases. In 2009, we just had five phase of election. 2009 election was conducted after delimitation of 2008, meaning the constituency boundaries and everything had changed. If you can conduct 2009 election after that kind of disruption in five phases, why can't 2024 election after 15 years could be conducted in four or five phases? Maybe there is a requirement of seven phases. Uh, and if you are going to tell me that elections are less peaceful in 2024 compared to what they were in 1990s or 2009, I'm not going to believe you. So you have to provide me more information for why it is happening. And again, I don't buy the logic that in the first phases there are more security concerns, seats are going. If that was the reason, then why are you holding Tamil Nadu in single phase on the, in the first phase? Right? So like, you can make up those arguments, but if I look at the seats and states that are going in every phase, that logic doesn't hold very easily. You know, that is the... Southern states have traditionally had shorter polls and there the polls are remaining short. It's the east and west where the situation has changed. Even Odisha now has a, has a much longer poll schedule than it used to at, at one time. Uh, Javed Ansari, if you were, at, what is the, what according to you would be an ideal length for a poll? As someone who's tracked elections for years, do you really believe you can do Indian elections in two or three phases max? If not three, certainly four. Not a day longer than four phases. You're convinced about that? 100%. And I say this on the basis of having had informal uh, chats with, with at least three former chief election commissioners and, and some DGPs as well. But why, why do you okay. think then is the pressure, why, is, why are the polls getting elongated? I'm sorry to press this point, but that is troubling. That if you're saying that you're, the former chief election commissioners you've spoken to say elections can be done in four phases, why do you think they're getting elongated? That's a, that's a question that the CEC, that should be directed to the CEC. Because it, I am not convinced. You're not convinced. Only Rajat Sethi seems convinced and Rajat says give the benefit of the doubt to the no, election no. commission. Am I correct, uh, Rajat? That the election no. commission knows more than Javed Ansari no. and me, certainly. Certainly. No, my point is very simple. My point is it is not a debatable topic. This is the no, matter why not? No, 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 no. Rajat, one minute. Rajat, just a minute. Javed, Javed, just a minute. You see, uh, uh, just to tell our viewers, Rajat, and you'll know this, a uh, 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 Lok Sabha election expenditure can vary from 45 lakhs to 95 lakhs, depending on the size of the constituency. Now, just think about it, that if I am a candidate in Mumbai, which is going to the polls on 20th, polls have been announced two months in advance, and my name has been already put out as I am the candidate from Bombay Northeast or Bombay South. I start my campaigning over two months, and I'm expected to do it within 95 lakhs. It won't happen. So, Rajdeep, you can announce the name even one year in advance. And, the, and then you can your own logic will be like, okay, I'm going to spend the money for one full year. That is bizarre logic. 
No, the campaign I mean, has started. Rajat, the campaign starts today, today right up to the time of May 20th. I today hypothetically announce the candidates for 2029 also. Party can say that I'm going to announce not just for 24, but also 29. Mm -hmm. Let him spend for five years. I mean, this is what kind of a logic this is. And also on a campaign, let me tell you, if it is, uh, you know, if the election is two months out, the intensity of the campaign only picks for 30 days only. No election anywhere in the country, you can sustain the momentum beyond 30 days. And, and, and effective campaign management is that how do you build proper crescendos in campaigns so that you peak at the day of polling and you don't peak out to it too much in advance. So there are there are logic that you can't start out any kind of a campaign way too early, even if it is the model code has, is announced and you still have two months Javed, to go. Javed, you're, again, you're again shaking your head. I can tell you examples that I can tell you on this. People yes, don't start off immediately. Uh, Punjab Rajat, will not wait. start the campaign from tomorrow once the model code kicks in. Javed. Rajat, with, with due respect to you, I can give you a hundred examples of where people have been campaigning for, for, for months on end. Jitin Prasada, in 2004, when we contested the first time, he, he went to every village, every Kasbah of his constituency. And okay, he, let, he started let, his campaign much earlier. Let, let me stop all of you on this uh, interesting topic of whether elections can be crunched or elongated. I'm joined by a special guest, Brajesh Pathak, UP's Deputy Chief Minister is with us. Brajesh Ji, thank you very much. Tell us, how do you see UP's 80 seats? Uh, the BJP is saying that mission 80. But how many will come? 70, 65, the last time it was 62. With your allies, it was 64. तो इस बार असली टारगेट बताइए उत्तर प्रदेश में उत्तर प्रदेश उत्तर प्रदेश में हम 80 के 80 सीटें इस बार प्रचंड बहुमत के साथ जीतेंगे माननीय प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी की गरीब कल्याण योजनाओं ने जन जन में पैठ बनाई है कोरोना महामारी काल से लेकर अब तक लोगों का मानना है कि माननीय मोदी जी हमारे परिवार के सदस्य की तरह अभिभावक की तरह है जो हमेशा सुख दुख में भारतीय जनता पार्टी उनके साथ कंधे से कंधा मिलाकर खड़ी रही है सबसे बड़ी बात है कि उत्तर प्रदेश में करोड़ों लोगों को गरीबी रेखा के नीचे से ऊपर उठाने में भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने कामयाबी हासिल की है उत्तर प्रदेश में कानून का राज स्थापित हुआ है आज समाजवादी पार्टी के शासन काल में वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन माफिया थे आज उत्तर प्रदेश में वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन प्रोडक्ट है उत्तर प्रदेश में हम लोगों की प्रति व्यक्ति आय बढ़ाने में कामयाब हुए हैं उत्तर प्रदेश में चारों तरफ खुशहाली का माहौल है ठीक है सीटें कितनी ब्रजेश जी ब्रजेश जी एयरपोर्ट ब्रजेश जी आज ब्रजेश जी आज आज के दिन लोग पूछ रहे हैं कि क्या टारगेट है हमारा 80 में 80 सीटा टारगेट है हम सभी सीटों पर प्रचंड बहुमत के साथ चुनाव जीतेंगे राय बरेली अमेठी भी हाँ राय बरेली भी जीतेंगे अमेठी भी जीतेंगे मैनपुरी भी जीतेंगे कोई कोई कुछ बदलाव अब और चुनाव के बीच में आ सकता है कोई ऐसे संकेत जिससे आपको लगे अभी भी पूरी तरह से आप या या आप पूरी तरह से आपका आत्मविश्वास है कि जो भी हो इस बार चुनाव हमें जीतना ही है दरअसल दरअसल विपक्ष दिग्भ्रमित है उनके पास कोई एजेंडा नहीं है कोई नीति नहीं है कांग्रेस नेतृत्व विहीन है उनके नेता समय समय पर हमेशा इस प्रकार की बयानबाजी करते हैं जिसे जनता उब चुकी है समाजवादी पार्टी की नेताओं का हाल यह जब जब वो सत्ता में रहे गुंडई अराजकता माफिया गिरी प्लाट मकान दुकान कब्जा करना बहु बेटी की इज्जत आबरू खतरे में डालना उत्तर प्रदेश को दंगों की आग में झोंकना उत्तर प्रदेश के लोग समाजवादी पार्टी को कभी माफ नहीं करेंगे हालात यह है कि उत्तर प्रदेश में विपक्ष पूरी तरह से साफ है हम अस्सी के अस्सी सीटें जीतेंगे प्रचंड बहुमत से जीतेंगे ब्रजेश पाठक जी आपने हमसे बात की आप कह रहे हैं 80 से 80 सीटें जीतेंगे बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया ब्रजेश जी हमसे बात करने रहे बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया लेट्स गो फ्रॉम नॉर्थ टू साउथ बिकॉज कर्नाटका गोज टू पोल्स इन टू फेजेस ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑफ अप्रैल एंड सेवेंथ ऑफ मे आर कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट अनगा इज विद मिनिस्टर इन द कर्नाटका गवर्नमेंट प्रियंक खरगे दिस इज वन ऑफ द स्टेट वे द ऑपोजिशन एंड द कांग्रेस इन पर्टिकुलर इज पिनिंग इट्स होप्स अनगा ओवर टू यू 
Rajdeep, we are now joined live and exclusive by Minister Priyank Karge. He is one of the most front runner ministers in Karnataka, who has always been, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, been very vehement when it comes to peddling misinformation, and he is one of the most strongest voice in the Karnataka government. Sir, thank you so much for talking to India today. The election dates are out. June fourth is a very big day for the entire country, the, you, know, you know, for the entire nation. That's when the election results will be out. How is the mood, sir, in the Congress fold? Well, we are a bit. We are well prepared, and uh, we have a great alliance uh, uh, running. And uh, I think, uh, uh, considering the uh, length of uh, the entire election uh, process, which is running close to around 90 days, it looks like uh, the ECI is also in completely uh, in sync with uh, the Prime Minister's uh, tour program. Uh, sir, you know, when it comes to the, to you know, the topic on misinformation, the EC also made, you know, made a very strong point about how, uh, you know, there is a lot of misinformation, disinformation, communal hatred that is always getting peddled on social media. And what, and what do you have to say about this very uh, 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 special decision that the EC has taken about this? No, I did see the uh, presser of uh, the commissioner and yeah. I'm glad uh, he brought out the three M's that is uh, money muscle and misinformation that uh, needs to be uh, curtailed in this election having acknowledged the fact that misinformation is indeed a great threat to democracy the ECI really needs to be serious on this because who's peddling this kind of misinformation where are these things origin from so if, if the election commission is really serious about uh, curbing misinformation, I think they should uh, immediately crack down on uh, a lot of handles and a lot of uh, YouTube channels that is uh, peddling such narratives, mm. peddling fake uh, news, peddling misinformation, disinformation, malinformation. Mm. I think if they are able to curb that to at least a 50 percent, then they're actually doing free and fair elections. Sir, even recently in the Vidhan Sauda, there was this pro-Pakistan slogan that was raised. Do you, and even very recently, there was a bomb blast that happened in, Ma, in, you know, in Rameshuram Cafe under your watch. Sir, do you think that these issues is going to have any sort of uh, impact on the Lok Sabha polls for Congress? Well, let's have a look. There are a lot of uh, issues that need to be spoken about in uh, uh, public, mm -hmm. whether it's the bomb blast issue or whether it is... Uh, uh, the unemployment, the real issues of unemployment, the real issues of price rise, economic equality, and even the nation's security. Mm. Mm. So the, we'll go to public with it, what facts we have. Let's see what uh, facts the BJP comes up with. So today the Prime Minister was in your home turf in Gulbarga and his opening remarks was, you know, he, you know, he took a jibe at Congress party. What do you have to say about the Prime Minister coming to your own home turf and attacking your uh, Congress party, sir? What's so surprising? I'm quite surprised you're asking a question like that. It's been 10 years. Has the Prime Minister ever spoke? One of those important factors is whether the Election Commission will actually be able to crack down on misinformation, especially through social media posts that are put out by political parties. Some of them uh, use uh, Facebook and other uh, social media uh, sites to uh, spread messages through false names. And that has been a cause of concern, these proxy sites that are being set up across uh, these uh, social media applications and services. Uh, still with us, Rahul Varma and uh, uh, Javed. To you, Rahul, is that a concern globally? We saw that even in the U.S. presidential election not too long ago. Uh, the misuse of social media, misuse of Facebook in particular, political parties under different names setting up uh, uh, sites and then spreading disinformation and misinformation. Yeah, absolutely, Rajdeep. See, uh, propaganda has been part of politics since time immemorial. What has been happening in last 10, 15 years is with the and so spread of mis misinformation also like uh, has been there for a very, very long time. What has been happening with Facebook and WhatsApp and, and, and these kind of social media platform that the spread of misinformation is one wide and it's very with a very rapid pace. So there is this concern and uh, what seems to be happening that political parties are using some of these platforms to gather more information about voter, voters. Now, I don't think uh, this can be reduced, uh, spread of misinformation can be reduced by 
uh, election commission or government bodies alone. Uh, this will continue to remain a problem, and especially with the rise of uh, uh, artificial intelligence, where pictures are going to be morphed, where videos of politicians are going to be morphed, uh, and that will happen across the aisle. So what we will see in the run-up to 2024 election, much more noise on, on misinformation being shared uh, from all sides of the political aisle. Uh, Javed Ansari, you are a journalist from the pre-Facebook era. Probably did your early reporting in the 80s uh, on a typewriter. Was the 84 election or 85 election your first election? Must have been a very that's different it, world. That's, that, that was a very different world. The 89 elections was the one where I really cut my teeth. I covered it from beginning to end. VP Singh's rise in the fall of Rajiv Gandhi. Uh, I, I agree with Rahul, you know. And here the election commission is on test. Because it's one thing to say that, you know, we shouldn't do this and we shouldn't do that. But the election commission must has to enforce that, that those crossing the line, those erring, those deliberately blurring the lines are, are dealt with irrespective of whether they are in government or in the opposition. Like I said earlier, the election commission must not only do the right thing, it ought to be seen to be doing the right thing. Which, which was the most exciting election you've covered, Javed? I think the two, the 89 elections. The 1989, the famous VP Singh election, yes. uh, where VP Singh took on the might of the Congress, is the most, that's the first elect, Lok Sabha election I had the privilege of covering. I was about all of 24. Uh, I got to meet VP Singh in that election, I remember, in uh, central Mumbai. He was addressing a large gathering there, and uh, eventually, even though he was not the single largest party, uh, he formed the government at the time with the support of the BJP and the left. And, and the, the left, yes. And, and the rest is history. But actually, I think, uh, if I may be allowed, Javed, for me, the most interesting election, because it was the most unexpected, uh, was 2004. Uh, oh, yes. I, I, in terms it would come of just... Second. It would, you know, for sure, it, excitement, 89. Yes. Because I was young and there was fire in the belly. And, You're still you know, young. When young. Uh, and, when, and when you're young, you're idealistic, a lot more idealistic. Mm -hmm. 2004 was, yes, exciting. So it would come a close second, but 89 takes the cake. Okay, so I, I, in, in my ranking, out of the 10 elections that I've covered, uh, the most exciting for me was, in many ways, 2004. Just in terms of the drama that took place after the election. There's one drama that takes place before elections, but that was a dramatic election because of what happened after that election. The other election, of course, that I remember uh, is in the early 90s, which uh, tragic election when Rajiv Gandhi was assassinated oh, yeah. in the middle of an election. That was 1991. Uh, but lots of memories. In fact, we have a special show tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Well, I'll take you down memory lane uh, of elections through the years. But Rahul Verma, as a political analyst academic, is there an election that stands out for you? Uh, so, Rajdeep and Javed, I'm much younger to you both when you were covering... No, no, Javed is the youngest out of us. Javed is 21. In his <laughs> part of UP, they are 21 forever. But go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I started following uh, elections. Uh, I, I think I vividly remember 1996 election when I was just uh, 10 years old. Uh, 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 you know, and, and so I, I actively started analyzing uh, since 2009. Uh, to me, all elections are fascinating in one way or the other, and they offer something new for students of politics to learn about, even if you just want to see it from the communication point of view. Uh, think about it, uh, the like in 99, you had the first time uh, telephone uh, uh, sort of like being used uh, when you you'll get messages that Mayatal Bihari Vajpayee Bodra on your landline. Uh, by 2004, uh, the SMS uh, mobile technology had come in, so SMS had started. Uh, by 2009 and 14, uh, Facebook comes in a big way. Mm -hmm. By 2019, you have WhatsApp coming in a big way. And now we'll see basically artificial intelligence being used in election campaigning. So every election brings in some fascinating aspects of, of uh, campaigning. Uh, mm -hmm. What seems to be happening, at least in last uh, uh, 15, 20 years, uh, elections are, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting more shriller in one way, uh, 
but also less uh, noisier in the other way. If I remember as a child, like you used to see lots of campaign and noise on the ground for pa parties campaigning for two, two and a half months. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this doesn't seem to happen now. You don't see that many posters or local level rallies taking place, but basically uh, uh, politics be conducted through uh, online platforms and, and TV channels and other things. So as a campaigning, uh, you know, like as a campaign and communication, in last 20 years, elections have been changing. But in terms of outcome, I think, yes, 2009, uh, uh, 2004 was uh, interesting, but also 2014. See, in 2014, everyone uh, uh, expected BJP to be ahead. But most pollsters were basically very conservative in giving an outright majority to BJP. And there were good reasons for it, because for 30 years, no one has seen any party crossing that majority. And so, uh, so to expect that BJP will win 25 out of 25 in Rajasthan, 26 out of 26 in Gujarat was uh, uh, like unimaginable. So 2014, in that sense, to my mind, changed the trajectory of Indian politics sure. as 1989 had done. I even wrote a book called The Election That Changed India 2014. So I'm going to give that book a bit of a plug since you said it was an election that changed the trajectory of India. I agree with you. The one election that I wish I was uh, old enough to cover was 1977. That must have been quite an election again. The famous election where Indira Gandhi was toppled by the Janta Party. And there again, most people thought that Indira could not be defeated. She was invincible. It turned out that the Janta Party was able to carry the day, particularly in uh, North India. Uh, gentlemen, uh, great to have you on the show. Just uh, a brief stop for just getting in uh, some reactions that are coming in from political party leaders. Take a look. BJP ke karjikarta har schedule, har tariq, har samay ke liye tayyar hai. Hamara to ek hi mudda hai, vikas, vikas, vikas. लेकिन लोकतंत्र के लिए परिवारवाद बहुत बड़ा खतरा है। I'm not going to be reading too much into the date. It was a, a point of information we all needed to make our plans for, uh, but I don't think we're going to change anything. My parliament convention, the traditional nominating convention we have here, is still scheduled for the 19th of March, and we'll go ahead with that. Obviously, I'm sure that the Election Commission knows what it's doing in terms of constitutional propriety. ये सब जो बातें आ रही हैं, इस पे जरूर चुनाव को ध्यान देना चाहिए कि ये अपने केवल कैलकुलेशन बता रहे हैं, या इन्होंने कोई सेटिंग बैठा रखी है, या कुछ ऐसा काम कर रखा जिससे ही 80 में 80 कर रहे हैं, 400 400 सीट तो लड़ी नहीं रही है भारतीय पार्टी, 400 लड़ी नहीं रही है 400 क के साथ जनता इस बार इंडियो को हटाएगी और इंडिया की सरकार बनवाएगी। इबार आशा करूँ कि इंडियो वाहिनी शंकर और बेशी थक गए। कारण पोती बुते कि इंडियो वाहिनी चला पश्चिम बंगाल बहुत संभव ना है। एवं निर्वाचन कमिशन ने प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस हम जो तो तो देखें जी मुख्य निर्वाचन कमिशनर जाते उन्हीं बंदो करा व्यवहार मासिल पागले व्यवहार बंदो करा जिन जाजा व्यवस्था नहीं है निर्वाचन कमिशन ने भी ऑलरेडी किसी किसी जगह धमकाना चमकाना शुरू हो चुका है और शंकरा और एक टक काम दिनों में बुझते पड़े गए थे तादेव डूबे जा टाइम ऐसे गए थे तो हम लोग शागो तो जाना चाहिए शादबा बोट of uh, elections or or it's according to expectations considering the uh, government has been pitching for one nation one poll see one nation one poll is a different kettle of fish that is i mean uh, that is absolutely then another aspect of what is right. of the political discourse right. that is going on in india but so far as general election is concerned it was well anticipated that election will be held in phases. And this is not the new phenomena being observed by us. In earlier occasion also, phased elections we have witnessed. And this time, this is the same repetition of the past. So nothing new in the seven phases of election that is going to be held in India. 
Interestingly, the election, chief election commissioner talks about misinformation and, uh, and saying that this, this, this time round it will just not be about warnings, it will be about some strict action that the CEC will take uh, considering the past records. Do you think that's a, a silver lining there? See, the issue is that everything has to be judged by a practicing, not by a preaching. Our Chief Election Commissioner has elucidated the entire spectrum of general elections which is poised to be held in India. And he has been bracing his entire machinery in order to get it done. We have also today noticed the views of elections commissions, including the moral, ethical, political, ideological, cultural, etc., etc. Right. Now, the challenge remains that what is being preached also to be complied with practices. So it is incumbent upon a chief election commissioner what he has professed has to be implemented across the nation. In earlier occasion also, we have sometimes faced some sorts of discriminations by the same constitutional body of our country, and we have uh, raised those issues also. So each and every occasion, hmm. the preaching has to be matched by practicing. Right. So, and also you are also waging a battle in Bengal, and you've raised that question many a times, uh, uh, sir, that, uh, you know, uh, about free and fair polls as far as West Bengal is concerned. So do you think that uh, this also applies, what the, uh, what the ECC is saying, also applies in Bengal, where there's a huge challenge as far as fairness of polls is concerned and, uh, uh, you know, intervention of the state government? So, across the nation, it should be implemented. This time... Uh, when the general elections is going to be held, hmm. we cannot differentiate Bengal and other states, etc., etc., et because uh, election commission has very distinctly mentioned the power of money, power of muscle, power of misinformation, and violation of MCC. So hmm. the expression has been general. It is not state-specific. But in so far as Bengal is concerned, there we have witnessed the severe poll violence when it is held under the superintendents under the rather natty shirt that Odir is wearing colorful shirt we'll wait and see how he faces up in that colorful battle versus cricketer turned politician uh, Yusuf Pathan in Berampur in Bengal just about enough time to thank my guests Javed Ansari Rahul Varma who've been with us right through